Okay, so today I've got a, uh, I don't know, I think it's about a 125 gallon fuel tank of diesel fuel. Um, there's a lot of stories out there where these things blow up and it's true. You shouldn't weld on them. I don't recommend it. I don't know why I'm doing it, but <clears throat> I've done a few of them in my lifetime, maybe 10 of them. Um, I had one of my friends that was an experienced welder for years actually blow himself up on a diesel tank and it burned him pretty bad for a long time. I mean, he was in, uh, he was in Salt Lake City at the burn unit. Um, and what happens is, if you're in the fuel, you can weld in the fuel. So if it's got a leak, typically you could weld when the fuel is in the tank. But when it comes up and it passes into vapor, then it will blow up. So the vapors are really what gets you. Um, this is pretty empty. I've got a little bit of water and soap in it. I've sloshed it around, tried to clean it out. Um, right now, I'm gonna take a torch, I'm gonna preheat this a little bit, um, just to kind of get the oils, the impurities out of it, because aluminum, if it's not clean, it's not gonna weld. So I'm gonna try to heat this up and get all the oils out of it and burn it out of there really quick, and then we're gonna go ahead and start welding this thing together. Okay, so a couple things real quick. If you're gonna go ahead and try to, you know, weld up a fuel tank like this, you know, it's really thin. This material's pretty thin right here. So you wanna make sure that you do a couple of test passes, make sure that you get your machine set up for the thickness. This little piece of aluminum is pretty thin right here. So I wanted to run a couple of test pieces and uh, turn it down so uh, you don't blow a hole in this thing. Um, the next thing is, is Make sure your tip's clean. Make sure your, your filler rod's clean. And uh, because any impurities in this thing, it's gonna cause a problem. Now, more than likely, we're probably gonna have a little bit of a problem because you can't get really all the oils out of this aluminum. Once it rips and tears like that, the diesel fuel and the, and the impurities get into the aluminum and it's really hard to get it out where it's torn at. So we're probably gonna get some black bubbles and it's not going to look really good but we're just going to feel it and see what happens Okay hey guys, so the fuel tank was a success. You know, listen, I mean, every day isn't like I come in here and I TIG weld every day. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more of a diversified welder. Um, I don't come in and just sit at a table and TIG weld all day. TIG welding is, a, is an art that you have to have lots of patience for, lots of concentration to be really good at it. Um, you know, me, it's just, it's real hard for me to sit in one place very long and just TIG weld all day long. Um, so I get anxiety, <laughs> but I know enough about TIG welding to know what you kind of have to do to get a job done. Um, you know, like this fuel tank right here, I can probably make more money welding this fuel tank together in, the, in probably the last, what, hour, hour and a half, two hours total, probably prepping this whole thing, getting it ready, getting all your equipment out. I mean, really most of it's prep, and getting your welders out and getting ready to weld it. Once you actually get into welding it, that's the easy part. It's getting everything else ready to do it. And that's what a lot of people don't understand when they bring something like this in and they're like, hey, what do you charge me to weld this fuel tank? Well, I'm probably gonna charge 250 bucks to weld this thing, okay? So, but most of my time was spent prepping, getting my welders out, getting everything out. You gotta remember, you still have consumables. Um, you're going through some aluminum rod, this stuff's not, extremely cheap um you know you're going through argon which isn't cheap i just filled that bottle up um yesterday and it was 77 dollars to fill up the bottle of argon now granted i didn't use all 77 dollars worth of argon but you got to remember that you do use consumables and there is money that is spent while you're doing this so whenever you're bidding a job or doing something like this you always want to make sure that you're covering your your butt on everything. So you figure shop, 
all your consumables, your equipment. And at the end of the day, I could put a hundred dollar bill in my pocket for an hour and a half worth of work and walk away and go do something else. So it's not bad. That's pretty good little, pretty good little pocket change just for not much work. Um, there was nothing heavy. It wasn't really that much involved here, but um, I don't recommend welding fuel tanks of any kind. Don't do it. Like I said, I've been welding for 30 years, maybe 35 years now. I've welded some fuel tanks. There's a lot of prep that goes into them. But remember, the vapors will explode in there and that's what will kill you or hurt somebody in the shop or something. Um, you know, I went through a lot of prep to get this thing ready to clean. I, I prepped it, cleaned it, so I could get it in here and actually weld it together. Um, you know, I preheated it, made sure the impurities were out of it. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it before you actually weld it, but I don't recommend trying to weld fuel tanks. It's, um, it's dangerous. Um, it's not something that you should do if you're inexperienced at all. If your buddy has a, a go-kart that needs a fuel tank welded up, tell him, sorry, can't do it. Just don't do it. Okay, now that I got this thing welded up, I think what I'm gonna do is take it outside. I'll fill it up full of water and just let it sit for a while and see if I can get any drips out of it. Um, I think it's pretty good. I went over it three or four times. I made little passes. Um, it was a pretty good crack. And not only that, but it was, you could see where it was cracked quite a bit further than the hole that was actually in the tank. So whenever you weld these things together, you wanna start at the bottom of the crack. You wanna put a little puddle in it to seal up that where the crack starts and then move your way back down and around and then fill it up at the end when you're done so the crack doesn't continue. There's nothing more frustrating than when you start an aluminum job and you start to weld and a bunch of black porosity and crap comes out of the aluminum. It's frustrating and you don't know why and you're wondering what's going on. Um, you know, it could be, it could simply be your, uh, your tungsten, which is in the end of this, that's, you know, maybe uh, somebody else was welding with it and buried the tip in something and uh, got, got it all dirty. This could be dirty. Your material could be dirty. You could have a bad ground. There's a lot of things that you need to do. Uh, make sure that your gloves aren't full of grease and oil when you're touching it. Um, you know, keep, keep, keep an eye on that stuff. And that will, the cleaner you are with aluminum, the better off you are. Just keep that in mind. But Anyway, I'm gonna go fill this thing up, see if it's leaking. If it don't leak, then I made myself money. If it does leak, then I'm losing money. <laughs> so let's go see. Hey guys, by the way, I wanna know what the craziest thing is that you've ever welded. I mean, I have a list of things, but I wanna hear some of the stuff on there because there's a lot of welders out there that have welded some crazy, crazy stuff in their lifetime. And um, I wanna know. So make sure you comment below, make sure you like and subscribe to our page and put your notification bell on because you'll know when we do the next video. It'll alert you and let you know. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one.